For a sequence y sub n, the z transform denoted by big Y of z is given by the infinite series big Y of z equals y0 plus y1z to the minus 1 plus y2z to the minus 2, etc. So we can use the sigma notation. Um, so the first term, which begins with n equals 0, is y0z to the 0, which is just y0. Then the next term is given by plugging 1 in for n, so we get y1z to the minus 1. Then we plug 2 in for n to get y2z to the minus 2, and so on. Let's get the z transform of the unit impulse sequence. This sequence has unit value or value 1 only when n is 0. It has value 0 for all other values of n. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3 gives 0. Similarly for minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. Now let's look at another notation for the Z transform. Um, we could just write Z of the sequence. Our definition of the Z transform only involves values of n that are greater than or equal to 0. We won't be considering negative values of n. So what's the first term? Well, what is Y sub 0 in this case? Well, we can see that it's equal to 1. So that's the zeroth term of this sequence. Now what about the next term? Well, when n is 1, you can see that the sequence has value 0, and we have to multiply that by z to the power of minus 1. The second term is also 0, and we have to multiply that by z to the power of minus 2. So you can see the pattern here. Um, we're just going to get 1. So the z-transform of the unit impulse sequence is 1. Now let's consider a unit impulse sequence where the impulse occurs at n equals 2. Notice that the minus sign here indicates that we have shifted the original sequence by 2 units to the right. So this point here has moved over to here. You see we want this sequence to have the same value at 2 that the original sequence had at 0. So, you know, if we plug in 2 for n, we get delta of 2 minus 2, which is delta of 0. And um, delta of 0 was our original impulse sequence, and that value was 1. That was the value of the original impulse sequence at 0. So that explains the minus sign, why the sequence is shifted to the right by two uni units if we replace the subscript n with n minus 2. Okay, so let's apply the definition of the z-transform. So we need the zeroth term of the sequence. Well, we can see that when n is 0, the sequence is 0. By the way, we need to alter this definition here. So we want our sequence to be 0 for every value of n other than n equals 2. Okay, what about the first term, y1? Um, well, you can see that that's 0. What about y2? Well, we know what that is. That's equal to 1. And we have to multiply that by z to the power of minus 2. And you can see that all the other terms are 0. 0z to the minus 3 plus 0z to the minus 4, etc. So z of delta of n minus 2 is z to the power of minus 2. You can see now that we can easily generalize this situation. Okay, to consider z of a unit impulse function where the impulse occurs at n equals m. That's going to be z to the power of minus m. Okay, these match. Now, let's consider the z-transform of the unit step sequence. This sequence has value 1 for all values of n greater than or equal to 0. And for negative n, the values are 0, but we are not interested in negative n, because we're summing our uh, series from 0 to plus infinity. So, what's y0? Well, it's going to be called u0 here. Well, we can see that u of 0 is 1. What about y1, or, or u1 in this case? Well, u1 is 1, and it has to be multiplied by z to the minus 1. Uh, u2 is also 1. Um, z to the minus 2. 
uh, U3 is 1, etc. Notice here that we have an infinite geometric series. So to get the second term from the first term, we have to multiply the first term by 1 over z. By one, multiply 1 by 1 over z, or multiply 1 by z to the minus 1. And, you know, if we multiply z to the minus 1 by 1 over z, we get uh, 1 over z by 1 over z, which is 1 over z squared, or z to the minus 2, and so on. So the common ratio, r, is 1 over z, or z to the power minus 1. Here we have the formula for the sum of the first n terms of any geometric series. A stands for the first term of the series. A is equal to 1 in our case. Now we're interested in the sum to infinity of this. So that um, will depend on the value of r, the common ratio. Well, it also depends on a, but um, we're, we are interested in the values of r that make the series convergent. The series will converge if the magnitude of r is less than 1. In other words, if, one, if r lies between minus 1 and plus 1. If r lies between minus 1 and plus 1, then r to the power of n will approach 0 as n approaches infinity. Okay, so we will consider situations where the magnitude of r is between minus 1 and 1. So r to the power of n will go to 0. So we'll have a times 1, which is a over 1 minus r. So s infinity is the z transform of our sequence. Um, a is the first term of the sequence, which we said is 1. And we have to divide by 1 minus r. Well, r is z to the power of minus 1. So this happens when the magnitude of r, or the magnitude of z to the power of minus 1, is less than 1. Now we often rewrite this thing by multiplying above and below by z. z times 1 on top is z. Multiply z by the denominator. z times 1 underneath is z. Now z times z to the minus 1 is minus 1. We multiply z by 1 over z. Now we can rewrite this condition for the z transform to exist. Okay, so this is the condition for the series to converge. If the series doesn't converge, then the z transform doesn't exist. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, z to the minus 1 is just 1 over z. The magnitude of a quotient is the quotient of the magnitude. So we have the magnitude of 1 divided by the magnitude of z. Well, the magnitude of 1 is just plus 1. We can multiply both sides of this inequality by the magnitude of z. Um, if we multiply the left-hand side, this thing, by the magnitude of z, we get 1. And if we multiply the right-hand side by the magnitude of z, we get the magnitude of z. And we haven't uh, affected this inequality because the magnitude of z is a positive quantity. We're multiplying both sides of this inequality by something positive. So the inequality remains less than. So we can see that this condition is equivalent to saying that the mod or magnitude of z must be greater than 1. Now we could use a slightly different notation to um, name this thing here. We just go back up to the definition again as a reminder. See, we can use a capital letter. So our sequence was little u of n, so the z transform will be big U of z. Now let's consider the geometric sequence a to the power of n. So the first term will involve plugging 0 in for n, so we will get a to the power of 0, which is just 1. The next term is a to the power of 1, which is a. The next term is a to the power of 2. Then we have a to the power of 3, and so on. Now using our notation, we could call the z transform of this sequence big A of z, big A to go with little a. So y0 in this case is 1, y1 is a, and we have to multiply that by z to the power of minus 1. Uh, y2 is a squared, which we have to multiply by z to the minus 2. 
uh, y3 will be a cubed, that'll be multiplied by z to the minus 3, etc. You can see that we get another geometric series. The common ratio r is a z to the power of minus 1. If you multiply a z to the power of minus 1 by any term, you will get the next term. So, provided that this series converges, in other words, provided that the z transform has a closed form, then this series will converge to a over 1 minus r. By the way, this a here refers to the first term. Okay, this is the notation for the sum to infinity of a geometric series. The letter a denotes the first term, not the a that's involved in the problem. So the first term is 1, and we have to divide this by 1 minus the common ratio, which is a z to the power of minus 1. Now we can multiply above and below by z. Multiply z by 1 to get z. z by this 1 is z. z by minus a, z to the minus 1 is minus a. The z's cancel. So this will be the result provided that r, which is this here, a z to the minus 1, its magnitude is less than 1. Okay, we want the magnitude of the common ratio of the series to be less than 1. So let's look at the condition that z must fulfill for the magnitude of az to the minus 1 to be less than 1. Well, the magnitude of a product is the product of the magnitudes. We can divide across both, both, divide both sides by the magnitude of a. That's a positive quantity, so that doesn't affect this inequality. z to the minus 1 can be written 1 over z. We have magnitude 1 over magnitude z. Well, that's just 1 over z. Now, in order for this fraction here, 1 over magnitude z to be less than 1 over the magnitude of a, it must be the case that the denominator of this fraction, magnitude of z, is greater than the denominator of this fraction. If you make this denominator bigger, then um, you've made, uh, you, know, you know, the fraction smaller, because we have the same numerator on top. Another thing you can do is just invert both fractions. So magnitude z over 1 is greater than magnitude a over 1. You reverse the inequality. Okay, so this is an important result for a geometric sequence. Let's take some examples of geometric sequence and sequences and get their z transforms. Let's take the sequence 2 to the power of n. Well, we can just apply this result with a equal to 2. Okay, so we have a to the n, here we have 2 to the n, so we have 1 minus 2 times z to the power minus 1. By the way, we wrote this a different way. We multiplied above and below by z. So that's a better form. That's what we get. So here's the z transform of 2 to the power of n. And this is valid for magnitude of z greater than the magnitude of 2. Well, the magnitude of 2 is just 2. Let's take the alternating sequence minus 1 to the power of n. Um, when n is 0, this is 1. When n is 1, we get minus 1. When n is 2, we get 1. So we get 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, etc. So we just plug minus 1 in for a, so we get z over z minus minus 1, or z plus 1. So this is value, uh, valid for the magnitude of z greater than the magnitude of a where a is minus 1. Now the magnitude of minus 1 is plus 1. Now what about the sequence e to the minus n? So remember n begins at 0 and then we have n equals 1, n equals 2 and so on. Well, um, we can rewrite this thing as e to the power of minus 1 to the power of n. So, we can apply our result, so you can see that a is what's inside the brackets here, it's e to the minus 1. So it's z over z minus e to the minus 1. And we know that this is valid for the magnitude of z uh, greater than a, where a in this case is e to the minus 1, or 1 over e. What about z of e to the minus alpha n? Well, again, like the previous example, we can uh, write this as e to the minus alpha 
to the power of n. e to the minus alpha to the power of n is just e to the power of minus alpha times n. So our constant a is e to the minus alpha. Alpha is meant to be some constant. So um, the z transform is z over z minus a, where a is e to the minus alpha. And this is valid for magnitude of z greater than a, where a is e to the minus alpha. Notice that in these last two examples that e to the minus 1 and e to the minus alpha are both positive quantities. So it doesn't matter if we include these magnitude lines or not. e raised to any power is a positive quantity.